Welcome to another episode of God's Business, where I interview the top Christian influencers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders on how you can create not just a good business, but God's business, where he's the multiplier of your success. And I have my wife here in the house because she just gave a phenomenal message. She prepared for weeks for this. She really felt called to do it and then went and preached it at our church and specifically to the youth. But this is like absolutely life transforming for just the promises of God through purity in your relationship. What does purity look like? What happens when we're unpure? How do we know if we are? What happens if we're walking in purity? How do we know if we are? How are the ways that we actually walk inside of purity? And so very cool topic. And I, I love the, that first slide that you made, which was, I think it was purity over abstinence. Is that what it was? Purity is greater than abstinence. Yeah, which is like for the married people out there, yeah. obviously you should not be abstinent at all. And so just we'll throw the dynamics in there of like that, but there's people yeah. that are maybe dating or something like that. And yeah, we, we learned this even in health that whenever you're trying to get away from something, it gravitates you towards it because whatever you focus mm-hmm. on, you gravitate towards. Exactly. So if you're trying to not destroy your life, then you're going to start walking towards destruction. Whereas if you start focusing on where you want to go, that more so is like, we'll have you walk out exactly where you yeah. actually want to get to. So excited for that. And maybe give a little overview of, of what it is and, and jump into it. Yeah. So, um, the youth pastor at our church, Vod. I, Vod, I approached him and I was like, Hey, like we should go over a purity type of, um, workbook. And you've been thinking about this for a long for, time. For, well. Like for a small group. And I was like, I think that'd be really cool for the kids. You know, this is what they're going through right now. And um, he was like, you know what? We're doing a series in September about real life issues. He's like, and the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, I want you to come and preach to the youth about purity. And I was like, all right. And it was really cool because I felt like I knew I was supposed to do that already because someone prophesied that over me um, last January. And so I was kind of just like waiting. I was like, I think eventually I'll, I'll preach on it. And so it was just really cool that I didn't have to do it in my own work. So like try to be like, hey, you should have me speak. Yeah, like yeah. I think what's so cool about the favor of God is like you you can't do anything to earn it. You know, like yep. you just get it. And God speaks to people. And then like you don't have to open the door and like beg for people you know, it, there's there's just um, something supernatural about it, and that's what's so cool. Like, I want more of those things, you know, yeah. in my life. I mean, life. David knew it too, right? Like, he knew that he was going to become king, and he knew yeah. that God was going to bring the right time, and he didn't really ever have to, like, do anything. Like, God yeah. searched him out. You yeah. know, it's like Samuel went out and, Same like, found Joseph. him. Same with Joseph. Yeah. It's like the one thing that they did is they did really well where they were at. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know if there's something to that, like because of that, or that's just naturally who they were. But it was like, David had fought the lion, fought the bear, like taking control of the herd and like taking care of it and like Mm -hmm. prepped him for Goliath and then prepped him to become king. And and for Joseph as well, like he was, he prospered everywhere he was at. Yeah. Except for maybe with his mouth when he told his brothers, but okay. So go for (laughs) it. Um, So basically what I loved about Um, this talk and what God gave me was that purity is greater than abstinence because so many people think that, you know, abstinence is just something that like you're supposed to do from God, but God actually doesn't really talk about that. He talks about being pure and purity doesn't end when you get married. Purity is a lifelong commitment of serving God and what it means to serve him. And so, um, one of the verses that I talked about um, is Mark 7, 20 through 23. It is what comes from inside that defiles you. For from within, out of a person's heart, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All of these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. And um, I think just knowing like that we had a sinful nature and like when we encounter these things when we feel greedy when we feel these lustful desires it's like yes those are feelings because we are human and we were born with a sinful nature um but the one verse that i had here um that just really like spoke to me is romans 6 6 We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. And 
there's just like this culture of like feelings right now. It's like, well, I feel like I want to do this. It's like, so like people feel feelings all the time. It doesn't make it right. Yeah. You know, like based on the Bible, like these are sins. These are things we shouldn't do. And it's okay to feel these things, but it's when we act upon them, you know, and we meditate on them because out of our heart, our mouth speaks. And then, you know, our actions follow that. I remember even Chris Valentin back in the day, he used to talk about the difference between thoughts and beliefs and how your mm -hmm. thoughts aren't you and how you can take every thought captive. And I remember he did it even with suicide. He was like, he's like, I've had times where I'm driving over a bridge and I'm like, I should jump off this bridge. <laughs> and he didn't leave there and was like, I'm suicidal. What's wrong with me? Yeah. And he was like, why would I think that? Like, that's so random. That's a random thought, but that's yeah. not who I am. And so it's like taking every thought captive in those moments. And he didn't divine, define himself based on a feeling or even a thought. And the cool thing about that is people that want to hear from God, they can hear from God and know his will inside of scripture. I was talking yeah. to my friend about this. I was in a hot tub and I was like, you know what's crazy? It's like, it's, it would never be God's will for me and my wife not to be together. Mm. So it's like cool to know because like his word says one thing. And so I'm like, yeah. oh, this is awesome. Like I know I can help hold on to this and know what he said. So I don't have to be like, God, what do you think I should do in this situation? There's times where I'm like, oh, I know what you've told me yeah. because your word says X. So. Yeah. So another one is first let the first the less the, oh my gosh, I can't the less Thessalonians. Thessalonians four, three through five. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. And the point that I made to um the kids is like you aren't going to look like the kids in your school. You aren't going to look like the kids on social media. You are going to look different because you know God. And this is the way, like if you want to follow God and serve him, like this is what we're called to do. And it's not like, oh, well in 2023, like I can just do whatever I want because like, you know, God changes and like he doesn't think this is bad anymore. It's like, no, God never changes. His word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so like going to the Bible, and this is why at church, like I brought 10 Bibles for the kids because I was like, if you don't have a Bible here tonight, like I'm gonna give you a Bible because how are you gonna know the will of God if you don't know the word of God? Like you're not gonna know what's right and what's wrong. You're just gonna think, well, this person's a Christian and they do it, so it must be right. No, you do not follow man, you follow God. People are going to make mistakes and you can't follow them. And so anyway, if you don't have a Bible, go pick your, get, get a Bible or download the Bible app, which is amazing. I love the Bible app. Yeah. Um, and then just like here, it's like not in a passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God um, and realizing like, just like the world is going to say that this stuff is okay. The world is going to say like when we were in the business like world of a lot of non-Christians, we weren't around Christians of the business world. They were telling you to do some pretty crazy stuff because in their mind, this was acceptable. And in, th in their mind, this is exciting and fun. Like, why wouldn't you want to do all this crazy stuff with other women, Nicholas? And it's like, okay, I'm not going to follow you pagans. Yeah. I'm going to follow God and I know God and this is what he wants us to do because I know your way of life leads to death and it, we know sin's consequences are not good. Yeah, and, and even so, Paul had talked about there was grace towards him because what he was doing was done out of ignorance. But yeah. for the people that are like, I follow God, I want to follow his word, that's different. Like these people that are maybe not doing that, they haven't had the same experience that you've had that would make you listen to a show like this. Yeah. And so because of that, they're not held to the same standard by mm -hmm. us or by God. But for us, it's like we know it. And so because of that, that's why we now hold ourselves to this higher standard. And so if Paul were to go and do the same things that he did prior to being a Christian and went and did them yeah. again, it would be worse because now he knows God and he knows the way yeah. and has denied it. But also I think it's big to know like what other people do don't, doesn't really affect you. And mm -hmm. it's not up to us to hold them to a standard that we're holding ourselves to because they haven't had the same experience. Because at some point, like I didn't believe what I believe now. Exactly but I had an experience that shifted me and committed me to Christ. And I was like, all right, this is what, this is now what I believe. 
I'm not going to push that on other people to expect them, but I'll hold the other people that say they believe what I do to the same standard, right? Exactly. And I think a lot of Christians want to just be inclusive of everyone of like, oh, it's okay that you do that. It's okay that you believe this or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, that's, Jesus wasn't actually all inclusive. Like Jesus was like, I'll hang out with the sinners, but I'm going to tell them, hey, repent and sin no more. Turn away from your sin. Yeah. And I think a lot of Christians now are afraid to call people out on their crap. Um, I'm not afraid to do that, but we can't condemn people. The Holy Spirit has to convict them, but we can tell them the truth. We can reveal like, hey, I understand you're living this way. And for a lot of Christians, it's they're living together before marriage. This is a huge thing that we see. They're, They're living together. They're having sex. They're basically married, but they're not. And, but they're living this way. And it's like, okay, well, God actually doesn't talk about that in the Bible. He wants us to have covenant and he wants us to be married that, you know, two shall become one. And most people don't want to talk about that because it hurts people's feelings and it like makes it really uncomfortable. But what's so cool is just recently at our church, some of the couples were living together and they started coming to the church and then they were like, oh crap, like we're not supposed to live like this. And then like, Pastor Chris or whoever like married them like in like two weeks and they just had like a little wedding at the church which is super cool. Bob Um, Goff said something that was cool which was he's like a lawyer or was by trade. Yeah. So he said is there enough evidence in your life like if someone wants to investigate your life is there enough evidence to say to show that you are who you say you are? Yeah. Like can they compile evidence and say yep it's true like they are who they say they are and you had just talked about even someone the other day that was going through something hard but their natural reaction was to like do what the world would do. Mm. And so it's like if they they were to get looked at through a microscope in that moment, be like, all right, are they actually a Christian? Do they believe what they believe? They wouldn't find evidence in their life of that thing. Yeah. So it's like for us, we want that evidence to be shown that if someone did an investigation on us, they're like, wow, like they, they are who they said they were, that they were. Yeah. There's a verse in Galatians, Galatians 1.10. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God, or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. And it's knowing like there's two paths we can take. We can either serve man and the world and what they think is acceptable and pleasing, or we can serve God. And I think that just like really hit home for me because I was like, wow, like I think once you define like, I am no longer trying to please man. And even in the business world, like, am I trying to serve all of these people or am I trying to serve God? And, you know, uh, what's so cool, we went to Hobby Lobby and got to tour and meet David Green and stuff. And we did an episode on this together. One of the things that they did was they mandated um, that they give out, abor- uh, not abortion. Well, I th- some of them were abortion pores, pills, but um, mainly birth, birth control. control. Yeah. And they were like, this goes against our values as a Christian company. Um, we don't believe in this and we're not going to serve man. We are going to serve God. And they said, no, we're not doing it. And the government sued them. And over they, a million a day. Yeah, over a million dollars a day. It cost them a lot of money to fight this battle. Eventually they won. They had to pay a lot of money, um, but they won. And it's like, I don't care that we lost money on this. I care that we serve God. Yeah. And it was just so, so cool to see his bravery um, and where his value stood. Because I think most people would be like, well, you know, it's okay. Like, just just give out the uh, the pills if they want them. You know, yeah. whatever. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And brush it off. But it's like, no, we're not trying to serve, to serve man. We're serving God here. Um, so one of the things um, that I talked about is like, what are the blessings of purity? And this is just the blessing of following God. So uh, Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. And people want to see God move in their life, but it's like the pure in heart see God. And where are we opening the door for the enemy to come into our life? Because sin is a foothold for the devil. You know, once you, you sin in your life, you're like, you're just, op- it's just an open door. So you want to close all those doors. Um, And you want to have, uh, you know, purity in heart because it's hard to see God when you're just clouded with all of this sin Mm -hmm. and stuff that's separating you from God. And thankfully we had Jesus that died on the cross and, um, and gave us a way to repent and to come clean before God. Um, 
Joshua 1, 8, my son, do not forget my teachings, but keep my commands on your heart for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. I mean, I want peace and prosperity, Yeah. you know? So it's like, we have to know God's teaching first uh, by reading the word of God, by going to church, all of this stuff, learning and then obeying it. And it is a promise from God that he will bring us peace and prosperity. Um, so I think knowing the promises of God is so important because God's promises don't fail. And when you know them, it's like, okay, God, like you said, I'm going to be prosperous. Like, where is this? Where am I not obeying you right now? Or what, like, why are you withholding the blessing right now? And uh, figuring that out. I know a lot of people have said it too, like God will usually have a, this is the blessing and this is usually like the thing that goes with it of what's expected mm -hmm. of us. Yeah. And, and again, whether everything, anything done apart from faith is a sin and we can do a mm -hmm. whole episode on the fact that this is all done in with grace, faith, yeah. et cetera. But faith is worked out through action. Yeah. Right. It's like, it, it also says that faith without works is dead. But it's exactly. not true faith if we don't, if, yeah, if, if something don't isn't happening. Yeah. Proverbs 3, 1 through 2. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And this is written by Solomon, who is extremely prosperous and successful. So he knows, like he was trying to keep the laws at that time, you know, the Ten Commandments and everything. Um and God made him prosperous and very the most successful man that's ever lived. And um, I just think it's super cool. It's like, wow, God, like if we follow you, you will bless us. And it might not always be super, like financially, but I do believe he will bless you financially. Like I'm 100% believe that um, because he calls us to be leaders and stewards of money, uh, but also spiritually rich too. So that's, uh, that's kind of my stuff. I feel like, you know, I, I, I walked out like how to stay pure, which is just like surrender, surrendering to God and ask for help. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. Um, having good mentors and friends. The way of the arrogant who rejects God's wisdom is right in his own eyes. But a wise and prudent man is he who listens to counsel. Proverbs twelve fifteen, And then, um, like I said, in Romans 6, 6, knowing like, we are no longer sinners, but saints and like what Jesus did on, yeah. the, cro on the cross for us, knowing our new identity is um, extremely, extremely important if we want to renew our mind and have the mind of Christ. Yeah. I think what's cool about what you talked about today is that purity and abstinence sounds like it's a premarital thing. And even when I opened it, I'm like, yeah. yeah, like, hey, like you should be having sex with your wife all the time if you're married. But it's also like a lot of the guys go on business trips or they you know have uh, or or the opposite for the women mm -hmm. too it's like they have maybe military men and they're gone or military women and so they're gone all the time and so there's so many different opportunities for the scripture that you just talked about which was like submit yourself before god and resist the devil yeah and then he'll flee from you and so it's like a formula that god's given us that isn't submit before god and then nothing ever happens it's like and then there's some type of influence that's resisted and then it goes away. Mm -hmm. And I think that that, that is a, such a cool promise because it also comes with like a formula. Yeah. It's like, hey, here's something that you can do. And so for any of the guys or the women out there, it's like making this a, a goal of life and an example for other people and an example mm -hmm. for your kids. And, and also for the people out there like Steve Weatherford that's coming and speaking at the last event, if you guys go check out his episode, he talks about his story and like yeah. his sexual perversion that he went through in his life mm -hmm. and the breakthrough that he's had because he had this like identity with an experience that wasn't aligning with God's word yeah. and how he submitted it and got breakthrough in that area. So I appreciate you, yeah. you sharing and bringing breakthrough well, for everyone. One last thing. It's not just the physical things that we're doing. It's also the stuff we're watching, the stuff that we're listening to. And it's so cool when the, when God convicts us of these things, because even like a couple years ago, I would, well, even maybe like a year ago, I watched like some popular shows and I was just like, dang, like, this is like straight up porn. Like, I don't know what I'm watching right now, but this is like the most popular show and every girl is watching it, but this is like not good. Yeah. Like, why do I need to watch other people doing this crazy crap? Like, I don't need that in my marriage. Yeah. And so 
it's not just, oh, well, I, like, I'm not doing anything with anyone else, but like if you're reading like these romance novels as like a woman or like watching these bad movies or this like, you know, terrible yeah. music, like that is opening doors into our life that we don't even realize. And I didn't even realize like, wow, like I'm, I'm leaving a gateway for like a spirit of lust into my life because I'm just doing what the world is doing yeah. instead of doing what God says to do. And, you know, it might seem extremely, extreme, extremely extreme of like, you can't watch this, you can't do this. And like, very, very conservative. But at the end of the day, it's like, I don't want to give the devil any room in my life um, to mess with me and my family. So if yeah. anything, if God is convicting me to stop doing something, to stop watching something, I'm going to stop because yeah. I know it's wrong. Yeah. And it is the only example that you have of what to do negative and like movies and shows. And again, you get positive movies and positive shows. Yeah. But if you were taking the context of like a guy who wants to be successful, but all day only watches things about failure and negative mindset and terrible things, like every time something happens in your life, you're going to default back to what you've seen and what you've heard. So you're going to be like, oh, when this happens, this outcome happens that's negative. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't even fill your mind with that. And so if you're like, what do I do in relationship or how do I respond to this or, yeah. or how should I act? And all you have is these terrible examples that are filling you all day, but you don't know God's word. You're not around other godly couples. You're not picking that up. Then it's mm -hmm. tough to make those types of decisions. And so I think it's really important to surround yourself with, with yeah. great couples as well. Great guys, great women that are walking out purity of heart, not just in abstinence or in just sexual things, but like in general, wanting to walk upright if you read through i just talked about it, i talked, went through first timothy and second timothy and stuff and it's like uh, corinthians oh. like paul consistently talks about hey if you want leadership this is what they should be like and if mm -hmm. we want to walk in a place where you could have leadership yeah. from a kingdom sense like that's a goal and you want to be around people that are resembling that so yeah. i know that the people out here are everyone is watching god's business especially to hear um this is, this is what we love talking about. And so if you're mm -hmm. watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. There's a little bell there that like allows you to get notifications every time we drop a new episode. So if you just want to see more of Amanda, that's fine with me too. You're good. Uh, but the other thing as well is on every podcast platform, this show streams from Spotify to iTunes. You should have an iPhone, but if you don't and you just love Joe Rogan so much that you want to watch on Spotify and listen on Spotify, you can do that as well.